Good morning, chat. Good morning, Inkwell Monster Thunder Viking, DP LaFole, Mark Rasbach, <clears throat> Mark Mothersbaugh, that's what I'll call you, Mark Mothersbaugh, Jam, Rewiz, how are y'all doing? Good morning, good morning, Schmevelin. How is everyone feeling this wonderful morning? <clears throat> Hopefully feeling better than me. <laughs> I'm good. I'm just like stressed, like stress buckets of doom over here. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for the wall. The, this wall. I got the, I got the, uh, sticker mule fat head. I have it a little stretched. So it's a little bit, uh, a little bit wrinkly at the bottom. I might have to redo it a little bit, but you can't really see it on camera. So, uh, I'm cool with how it turned out. <laughs> it's midnight here. So a little sleepy hoof. Yeah. So, um, just so you know, the size of this is two feet by two feet, so that tells you how large my head is. <laughs> a little bit wrinkly at the bottom. That goes for a lot of things, doesn't it, Patrick? Um, Y'all, hang on one second. I'm going to turn the fan on up here. It's all, all of a sudden got, like, super hot. I don't know why. It's super, super crazy. It'll take me two seconds. Uh, you can see my glasses are even fogging up because I'm hot. So, Niazi Master, 25 months sub, and I haven't fixed my, I haven't fixed my cheerleaders yet. All right, I'll be back in two seconds. Just me. You might see some weird lighting for a minute. I got the door shut in here so it says suffy evan max thanks for the sub 19 months 25 months for neo that's amazing so y'all are awesome wall graphic looks good yeah they did a good job so I'm, I'm definitely happy with it might uh might have to rearrange it a little bit but it, it's pretty cool i'm happy i'm happy with it so pen and apple day huh so the apple pen or the pineapple pen uh video yeah, I don't know. I, like, I don't know what time any of the Apple stuff is today. What time do y'all need to be out of here, class? What time does class need to be uh, let go today? I don't even know what Apple's announcing. I just know that I had to do a podcast, solo podcast, one Eastern. Oh, we'll be gone long before then. I'm like mega stressed today, so we probably won't go p past like an hour, hour and a half. Or so, so, um, <clears throat> never Apple sucks. That's okay. Like, I'm good with that. Yeah, we don't have to do that. Um, but yeah, but Mike ditched me today. He got a call last week. With, if y'all heard us on the podcast last week, he got a call like Tuesday saying from Apple or an email is like, you're invited to this thing. So he's like, you're on your own buddy, but that's okay. We got Gina Salarino from custom nib studio. So look for that tomorrow morning, afternoon, kind of normal podcast release time. Just no live show tomorrow for the podcast. Um, so my conversation with Gina was great. She's great. Anyone that knows her knows how great she is. And uh, we had uh, we had some good, fun conversations. Uh, she just makes me smile. Like she's she's so upbeat and uh, positive. Like it, it can't help but be contagious. So y'all look for that. Uh, mega stressed. You okay? Yeah, I'm just mega stressed since last night. Like my my daughter. Like if any of y'all follow me on Twitter, my daughter's class got quarantined, and it's not even that. Like it's everything that goes along with that. And, and we found out later, it's not even her class. They narrow it down to the kids that were within six feet of this person for a greater amount of time than the rest of the kids. So it's like three or four kids that are newly quarantined, which means my daughter was mega close to the person that got tested for positive. So my daughter's really stressing out, like she was puking this morning. Um, just cause she's so stressed out about getting sick and then trying to figure out like how class is going to work now. So it's just a hot mess. You know, I've been running, taking Tyler to school, going to get my flu shot, you know, dealing with, you know, her being home. So it's just, it's just, um, I'm just like, if you couldn't tell by my, by my speech patterns this morning, I'm just like, mm. 
my wife was stress puking this morning too. Yeah. Like my daughter has mega high anxiety as it is. So just even going on a normal day is tough for her. So, um, so yeah. So when I get done here, I get to go call doctors to see like we had appointments scheduled to see how we're going to rearrange these. So it's just like, it's going to be fine. It's just, you know, we talk about the mental overhead, like I'm maximum mental overheaded right now. I'm glad I got that retro 51 project off my plate as of yesterday morning. So <laughs> it was good. As I pound, oh, that I'm thirsty. All right, but I did bring something fun for us to discover today. Like I didn't have a, um, I didn't have a uh, any great plans today because I'm just like, oh, Sam, eight staff tested positive. That's like extremely high. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So actually, Beth, she gets to take today off from school. Is what we found out this morning that she doesn't just start with the virtual class. They actually, they called it like 7.30 last night, sent an email after that that said, you don't get, uh, Wayne Ashley Berry, thank you for the sub, appreciate you. Let's go. That um, she won't be counted absent today. She doesn't have to do anything today except check in on the Google Classroom to see if there's any assignments. She doesn't have to sit through classes. Tomorrow she'll have to start sitting through her classes because all the classes that are in person are uh, recording remotely as well. So she'll have to be in class tomorrow, in class. But today she doesn't. She's sitting out in the living room, like checking in. Like she gets alerts on Google Classroom when something new pops up and she's watching TV and hanging out with Toby. So yeah, she's mega stressed. And uh, But they give them 24 hours to just like to decompress because I mean she's 14 she's scared right she can't function you know during during a class like she's worried about getting coronavirus and is she gonna have to go to the hospital like that's what we're dealing with so anywho that's where we're at today so we're obviously not gonna go mega long today on the stream but I did bring something to get my mind off of it and uh, y'all can help me too so Y'all are quite familiar with my conversations on the Closet of Doom, which for those that aren't, it's basically my pen storage closet. So I have just a ton of stuff. That's where the stuff I'm not using today goes, right? Stuff I'm not actively using, it gets put away. Well, there's various levels of the Closet of Doom, right? There's your long-term storage, you know, like say a bunch of my gel pens that I'm not using right now. Those are kind of more stashed away. I don't need to access them. Um, and we'll try to, we'll do a stream. CPG Gaming, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Paper Cat Lady, thanks for the sub. You're awesome. Uh, <clears throat> how much wife hate does your wife have for that closet? Not much because she has a photography hobby and she, she uses about a quarter of the closet. I use about three quarters of it. And she told me this past weekend, she's like, I'm going to go clean my part of the closet i'm like you do that <laughs> it'll make mine look better <laughs> so she doesn't she doesn't like it but she she gets it so we'll do a closet of doom stream um soon whenever i get a weekend or time to like test that i can actually set up one of these cameras that i have here on the desk on my laptop and run it from the closet and you'd be able to see in there we'll do that um so i just need to test it out so anyway what I was saying, there is, you know, different levels of storage stuff I don't need access to immediately, and then stuff I do need access to immediately. So a lot of my nicer non-fountain pens, um, say like, you know, metal barrel pens, Kickstarter pens, you know, interesting ballpoints, things like that, those don't get stuffed away with like your basic gel ink, like your Pilot High Tech C pile that gets over there. Doom mean it's extremely chaotic in the closet? Yes, it's a madhouse of stuff. So uh, y'all will get to see it soon. So like the the fountain pens, whoa, sorry, hit the table. The fountain pens are stored and organized and protected in um, cigar box pen cases. I have those retro 51 trays, like 15, 16 pen trays. Manguiso, thanks for the, thanks for the bits. You're awesome, thank you. CP Gaming, appreciate you again following. Hi, good morning. Um, so like the fountain pens are protected. They're either in 
proper storage, you know, trays, cigar boxes, or in pin cases, which are all stored away. But then I have like all kinds of random stuff that I want to use and at least maybe not use on a daily basis, weekly basis, or even monthly basis, but stuff I want to have access to when I want to reference it, I want to use it, you know, I want to carry it for a week and use it because I haven't been using it or do some comparisons with this pen to another pen, or it's just unique to where I want it around to be able to grab it if I need to photograph it to show something else. So that spot on the shelf has all kinds of pen blocks, right? That's where like my dudek blocks go, um, my other pen, like my vertical pen storage. And then I grabbed one of those to bring in today to show to y'all that was so we can talk about. So this is one of those E&M blocks. Okay, this is a really popular block that they sold out of almost immediately. Hey, good morning, Jacqueline. Because it has like the very wide circles and the very tiny circles here and all kinds of things. So I thought I would grab this block because it just sits out um, by, you know, these, these are all things, these are all pens that I love and I want to be able to use them and grab them, but I don't necessarily need them living on my desk because I don't need them. Um, you know, at all times. So I thought I'd grab this because there's some really unique stuff in there like this. I forgot who gave me this or if I bought it. Someone might have given it to me. Um, some of y'all might know what this is. Does anyone want to take a guess what this is? Oh, good. I can show it. I can compare it to the to the pen in the background now. Anyone want to guess what this is? This is a Koenor Rapidograph piston filling technical pen. So it's one of the micro tip pens. Let's see here. Might have to put on the other monitor, the other camera for today. Let's see if it can show it in here. So it's a technical pen. You can kind of see the tip there. Whoops. Apologies. Um, doesn't say what size it is, but it's tiny. And then it's a piston filler. So you can just fill it up with fountain pen ink. So you just unscrew the blind cap and it's got a little piston guy here and you just draw up the ink, stick it in your ink bottle. It's rad. Like, and these are like, I, I've someone, someone gave this to me. So let's see exactly what it's called. It's the 3060 number zero, I guess is the nib size. Koenor Rapidograph 3060. These are like 20 bucks. When I, after someone gave it to me, I was like, I need more of these, which I didn't go get more of these, but it's that good of a writer. You just draw up your regular fountain pen ink and then it's got that technical point on there. So these are the points that you get in the Rapidographs that are just like chopped off. It's like a pipe. There's no ball in the tip, right? So like technical drawing pens don't have balls in the tip. So it's not a smooth writer, right? It's made to be like super fine, super, super clean, super sharp. So it's pretty wild. And again, they're like $20. Like you can't get something this cool for that cheap. Let me put this, um, let me put this notebook here so I can, I can uh, lay out the pens that I've talked about. Do I have, this might work better. <clears throat> this one might work better. Just a space to lay this stuff down. And then stick it on the camera. I'm working with Anna on the desk pad. Uh, Jacqueline's gonna try to take credit for that. Jacqueline's in the chat today. She's going to attempt to take credit for that, but don't let her fool you guys. Like it was my idea first. Do you like the Montblanc Meisterstück? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great pen. I have one. Like I don't use, I don't uh, mess with them a lot. So the other cool thing that this block holds is a lot of, you know, Kickstarter pens that my friends send me to prototype. So in this block alone, Y'all know what this one is? I think some of y'all know what this one is. I'll let y'all name it. Fathead, let's go. 
Y'all know what this one is, right? So this is the pin type C, but it's made after those old snappy pins you used to get at the arcade, like in the 1980s and 90s, like with your skee ball tickets, you get one of those little, uh, those little flippy things. Um, so I, um, I got to work with, uh, uh, Sayway and Taylor, like this is the very first, uh, prototype from that project. This has got to be three years old. He just sent it to me in an envelope. He's like, don't show anyone this. He's just like, take this, play with it. So this is a plastic one. This is like a, their 3D printed one. This is the very first edition, right? Then they came out with like a real prototype that was titanium and metal. And then all that worked its way into the final version, which has a clip on it, which is pretty cool. Like, so like this is the, This is the way the uh, the process went, if you will, in CWT's um, making of the pen Type C, and I'm like super fortunate to be able to like check with these guys. Oh, don't show anyone. That was like three years ago. Don't show anyone. Like this product exists now. This is when it didn't exist, right? It was the 3D printed model, and then this is when they did the metal barrel. Lionel, hey Luna. I hope you feel better. I hope you're having a good day. So this was the like the next like this is probably like the beta level, and then this is like the final version, like the polished, you know, completely like Kickstarter version of, of the pen. So it's cool to be able to get those types of things and like check out these things early. So this is a this is a great result from what started as. I really like the clip on it actually for what's supposed to be like a small skinny pin you can still have the clip that keeps it really really fine and nice so good morning my first stream from your house what's up even supposing glad you made it so yeah like they did a really good job with this so yeah so like that's the kind of fun stuff i keep in this tray um i have another one that i'm looking at right now Instead of going in order, I can pick these out and tell stories. So, um, get another drink. Trunelli, thoughts on the new Krishna ink bottles? Um, they pulled them, unless they've come up with a new, new one. Does Krishna have the new, new yet? Or just the new one that they pulled? Because it was great, but they didn't like how close it was to an existing bottle. Even though I think theirs look better. Um, they were getting some grief from it and probably did the right decision to pull it off. I don't know if they've, have they come out with a replacement for that yet? I don't know. <clears throat> so along the same lines as the pin type C, I think everyone, or at least some of y'all know this one. So this is what this block holds, right? These are, these are pins I do not want to lose, but I don't use them all the time. So this is the Mario Del Mare. Um, I forget what the exact name of this pin was, but it's the it's the the two two pin. Yeah, there you go. So it has the D one refills built into an acrylic um, body. So this was just made to clip inside a notebook. So it's got a little clip. Um, this is one of the prototype materials. Like this isn't the one. Um, Oh, I'll get you. I'll get to you that uh, that question here in just a second. So this is, um, yeah, one of the early prototype acrylic materials, and then I got the backer edition, the backer one that's got the blue in there, and the much finer um, stamping, if you will. So yeah, these are cool. You can tell. Well, this no, this one, this one. I can't tell which one I'm holding. You can tell this one I got from the Kickstarter I've never used. <laughs> it still has the, the things on it, but I used the uh, the prototype that he sent me uh, before. Oh, they posted a new bottle on Instagram a few minutes ago. Please link that in the chat. You're allowed to put links in here as long as you're not spammy. Go ahead and put that in there so we can we can, we can can talk about it. Um, oh, free birth. Hey, Brad, I know you got the Sky KOP. I actually literally have the Sky KOP right here. 
Uh, I've even written with yours. Nice. I got a KOP demo several months ago. I've ended up with water between the section and the housing. Can't figure out where it came from and how to get it out. Any thoughts? Not the end of the world. I plan to rip the nip out when Conan's become available again. So in this section up here, when you clean it, it does sometimes get water and it's a pain in the ass to get out. Like there's not a great solution for that. Um, but yeah, Sam the Red, um, there is a uh, sailor disassembly. You can actually screw the nib housing out from the pen. It's super easy and you can clean it out. So I don't think I've even done that on mine. So like you, I would just be frustrated with it. And, um, you know, and came out, um, you know, just dealt with it. But yeah, it gets up in here and you can, you can, I guess, unscrew this, which I've never done. So yeah, definitely watch the YouTube video. It's not gonna affect your pen, but it's an annoyance right it's a very annoying thing especially when you have a pretty pen like this and you see like a little globby looking thing right there so take a look at that so the krishna they came out with the same bottle but with a licensing agreement let's pull this up for a second we'll take a look it's gotten a bit of algae growth that's not good like you want to clean that out so yeah you want to try to figure out how to get that out reintroducing the krishna ink s series pakiza as a limited edition ink of 2000 units in collaboration with gecko design there will be a slight price increase all existing customers will receive their orders with the same old price okay like good right i think this bottle looks better than the gecko bottle like it looks more functional from a fountain pen dipping the nib into a fountain pen. Like when you have something like that's this size, you're not gonna, you're not, you're gonna have a bad time with that old design getting this type of pen filled, but I think you can fill it with, with this bottle design. So that'd be cool. Have you seen Kiwi inks? I've just seen some of the links that people have been sending me, but I haven't had to play with them. So good. I'm glad this bottle gets to exist. Um, and I'm glad that um, they work together for a solution. So yeah, that's cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, like we don't have to fight about it on the internet, right, Evan? Let's like, hey, there's a problem, okay? Admit it, there's a problem. Let's, can we come up with a solution that would be equitable for everyone? Cool, let's do that. That's cool, yeah. Because I think Gecko was, was pretty uh, aggressively ticked, and you know maybe rightfully so, but I'm glad they were able to to work it out. So very cool. Pen out I got my first Franklin Kristoff 45 broad, and I can't stop using it. That's a great pen. Like I'll make no bones. Excuse me about it. That's a great pen. All right, let's scan back up. All right, so back to the whole premise of this chat. I keep this block handy to hold the cool stuff that I don't want vanishing in the closet of doom, right? Um, so even though maybe I haven't used this Mario de Mare, I want it available for when I get asked about it or want to compare it to something else or say, hey, someone's did a design like this, you know, things like that. Tessa, you want more? That's how they get you. That's why they have a 50 pin club because they know what's happening. <clears throat> so yeah, that's pin type C from prototype to production phase and the the 2-2 two -two pin from prototype to production phase. It's cool to, to be able to have this stuff. Um, this kind of goes along with it a little bit, even though this is the final version. I got an early look at, this was the uh, machine era. Uh, I forget what they call this, twist, twist something. This is the final Kickstarter version that I backed. Um, that's the thing with a lot of these projects, like I'll get early looks at them and then I'll usually just go back them in the end because I wanna support all these people that are making cool stuff. So this is the Machine Era twist. Um, it's just a really well-designed pen. I like it obviously because it's gray and orange. I mean, hello, right? That's the, boy, I can't line things up. That's kind of my jam right there, right? But it, the field pin, thank you. Um, you know, orange twist, 
twist mechanism. I have the, looks like I have the Oto uh, flash dry in there because it's a needle point. Um, so yeah, so a lot of these Kickstarter machine pins will live in this block in the closet of doom because I'm not using it today, but I'm probably gonna run out and wanna grab it at some point. I feel the siren song of the 50 pin club sometimes, but yeah, I'm with you. Like there's no, like that is not something I would be into. Um, I'd want too many, I'd, I like variety too much to have that many. Now I probably have 10 Franklin Kristoffs and that's more than enough for me. So I'll probably need to, I'll probably start paring that down to be honest. So, um, do we have any more Kickstarter pins in here? I got some really random stuff in here. This is the, uh, oh, did I miss some questions? Kaveco Paladin and Evergreen Special Edition has shipped. Schmevelin, did you see the, the Paladin, the Kaveco Paladin? Are you a, a Kaveco? Are you a Kaveco fan, Schmevelin? If you are, you certainly have the Paladin coming, right? I mean, that is that is like your color. My favorite FC is the one I won in the giveaway. You like them but don't love them. Yeah, but that's a that's some matchy matchy right there. Um this was one of the first shown pens that I got. Um, this was the second, at least the second batch though, because he didn't have the clips in the first batch. And I, for some reason, I like clips on my mini pins. I don't have to have them. Um, but I do like them. Like if I have a choice between A and A, no clip and B with clip, I'll take B most of the time if it looks good. And I think this looks good. Um, if there's no pen option, did you see the DM I sent you about Kaveco requiring special editions to print the color name on the caps now? No, I mean, I saw the DM but I don't think I grasped what you were saying. So let's let's play a game. Let's say I'm gonna make a purple Kaveco Sport. Do I have to stamp um, Violet Violet Bloom on the cap in an effort to allow someone else to have the same color and call it Purple Cosmos? Is that the the theory? Because I. I read your po I read your message, but I didn't comprehend it. I'm slow on the comprehension sometimes. Look at this hair. What is happening? So that seems to be what they're suggesting. I get it. Yeah, I'm cool with that. That way we can have. They prob they're probably a lot more. They're a lot limited, more limited in acrylic colors than we are of ink colors, for example, right? Well, then you make the orange pen, and on the cap, you just call it rhymes with orange. And then, boom, product. I'm in. So, uh, you had to buy more Colony on inks. It's all your fault. Blame accepted. Um, oh, Rebuzzles, you said it a minute ago. Got your Poe pen. I saw that on Instagram this morning. It looks amazing. Interested to see what that looks like on the Kaveco Sport, yeah. That's the joke, Jackie. It's 100% has to be in response to those coral pens, right? So like uh, Sarah said, she's reviewing the collector's edition. I have the coral and I should have taken pictures of it before I sent it off to Sarah in comparison those two. If you hadn't made the Retro 51 celebration, what were you planning for the design? I didn't have one yet because the Retro 51 opportunity came along in the window where I would have been working on designs or picking designs. So there is not even a secondary design in existence for that. Are you still using your William Hanna? Are you liking it? Yes. Uh, Hey, just joined. I missed the Kickstarter talk. No, we can talk about that. Actually, we'll check it. We'll do an update um, the, with the Retro 51 Kickstarter or the Not Kickstarter. I'm guessing maybe you're thinking Not Kickstarter because that's on my list to uh, to update. So still using the William Hanna. The one thing I'm not using, so I'm going to change up. I didn't end up using the calendar thing 
like that ended up being not useful for me. I need for this type of layout, the month month spread, I'm I'm good using digital calendar for that. But I do live off the the weekly thing. So like that's what this week looks like and then you know this is what like the previous week looks like by the end of the week right with both pages in use you know those are kind of like completed weeks so um that's what i use that's the the middle section here and then the back section is just blank paper where i have some notes and stuff in there you know just random notes and things like that so yeah still very much using it not Kickstarter. Let's take a break and talk about that. Good morning from smoky Southern California. I hope you're staying safe out there. That's a tough situation. Nothing like starting the day with computer issues. That sucks, love, love, bless. Um, real quick. So I'm theoretically trying to launch a Knock Co. Kickstarter today. I submitted it for review on Saturday. Um, normally with knock, turn this off for a second. Normally with knock, we have done so many successful Kickstarter projects. <clears throat> oh, I got to show you this text I got from Brian. We do, we've done so many successful Kickstarter projects. We're in a queue to where we almost bypass approval. Like we submit for approval and then it's automatically approved, right? So I submit it and it comes back. You may launch your Kickstarter when you feel ready. I think what's happened since the pandemic is they've done away with these queues because my project that is submitted has been sitting for days. So let me check. So I haven't checked it today. That's one thing I was gonna do on stream here is check the status um, once it's approved I can just go and release it so I'm gonna put a note out today the fountain pen of youth I like that I like that very much so once it gets approved I can launch it I don't have to do anything else I need to verify it but it's like you know take me like 30 minutes after it's approved to say am I really ready to push this button so the Knox, Knockco wax canvas pen cases, your project in, is in review. Stay tuned. You'll get a response by September 17th. So that's where we're at. Um, I did a really terrible, so there's, there's the current status. All right. So I'll put out a note today. Actually, that will probably be my Instagram post today is your project is in review. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll do an update update for this uh, today. I did a really terrible video for this, which is a, like I'm cool with. Like I'm anyone who's known me a long time knows I'm not big on like the video and audio editing. Like that's not my jam. Um, so I did like I did this like in one take, um, one take video of me in the Knox shipping department. It's it's pretty great. Like you know it's just straightforward, but. Um, you know, project's ready. So I'm just waiting on the approval. The only thing that'll suck is if it doesn't get approved for some random reason. Like, this is a very simple, straightforward product. I've done, I don't know how many projects now on Kickstarter. I think I have all, all the I's dotted and T's crossed, but you never know what they might come up with <clears throat> on this. So, yeah, there's your status. Um, it's ready to go as soon as they're ready for it to go. So... But I think they they have uh, different cues now that um, you know they're probably a lot of them are working from home. Um, I guess we're not flagged the same as we were before. Pen addict washi tape that's always been on my list. We have we had a Notco washi tape design somewhere floating around. <clears throat> so there you go. That's your update, Coco. I will have a update on Instagram this afternoon. So we'll see. All dots and dashes on the Notco washi. Yeah, and it had the it had the in logo with the uh, dot dot dash background pattern in logo uh, repeated. I'll still probably make that. It's just 
way down the line somewhere. So, but I appreciate you asking that, Coco. I appreciate y'all's support. I'm a, I'm a hitch y'all up pretty good for that one. Um, and don't forget if y'all are interested in the raffle of the um, Jonathan Brooks um, Lamy Arushi Safari. That's going on until Monday. I'm gonna put a link out this afternoon to remind to like remind everyone that you have one week left to get into that. So that'll be good. All right. What do you wait? What and Beth? Uh, pen attic washi. Well, we did a Notco design. Um, I could do a pen attic one pretty easily too. All right. We're back on the desk cam now. I can scoot it back in. Oof. You'll buy the washi. Good. Good, good, good. All right. So, um, working through this block here, I have two things that I don't use all the time, but I talk about pretty frequently because they're really, really good. And it's both the Lamy Safari Ballpoint and the Lamy Safari Multi Pen. These are really good quality pens. Like I recommend this Ballpoint a lot because for a Lamy Safari, it's priced really, really well. It's like around $60, which for someone, like if you're buying a gift for someone, it's a really kind of, quality gift i feel like it's pretty neat the multi-pen i think is is hit or miss on whether you can get them right like they're a normal item but like not everyone cares them. oh did i say safari 2000 yeah sorry 2000 mommy 2000 Ooh, you think i can start a fire if i do this no i don't know if these are double as fire starters or not so anyway so the multi-pin is like the gravity knock. You hold it in the direction of the refill you want, click it out, you know, roll it around, get the different color refill, that kind of thing. It's a very cool mechanism. So, yeah, Evan, you had a bad uh, experience with the multi-pin. I don't have a bad experience with the multi-pin, but it rattles on the inside because of the mechanism, right? It's basically a um, trap door type of thing. You have to turn it get it in the right place and then it slots in. So it's always gonna be rattly on the inside. So that's my issue. Does the Lamy 2000 multi-pen feel cheaper than the fountain pen? It feels lighter. I mean, they're definitely lighter, right? Because there's no piston in them. And the the knock and the mechanism in here uh, makes it feel different, you know? And then like it rattles. So, I mean, if that's your definition of cheaper, lighter and louder, it feels cheaper. So yeah, it's not the same. The multi feels less spectacular. Yeah, I'll buy that. So that's why I recommend this guy all the time. It's a really, really great pen. So there you go. So those are your two Lamis. Um, if Jessie's still in here, we have her favorite pen, the uh, TI2 uh, multi liner. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. TI2 Multiliner. So this one is one of the uh, original kicks. This was the first kicks tech liner. Sorry. This is one of the first Kickstarter colors that they did. So I've had one before this. Uh, Mike sent me a prototype. Mike Bond, who makes these, sent me a prototype of this early. And I think I just, I think I probably gave it away or gave it to someone. This is the one I got off of Kickstarter. Um, it was the blue color, and I, I forget what they called this exact color, but this is from the first campaign. Um, and it's just a neat, neat color. Um, so I have this one. It's like bluish copper. It's kind of wild looking. I really like it. You didn't see any squires in that block? That's a feature. It's a feature of this block. It's squire proof. Um, and then this one was one that Mike did for Knock. We did like a blurple multicam. Um, and this was, I think, one of the rejected ones because it was too blue. Um, our blurples had more pur purple in them. Um, so, like, I think this was one of the samples that we got. And we said, just like this, but more purple. So, I think anyone who has one of the old knock design ones um, is more purple than this one. But it's a pretty great pen. Um, it's one of my favorite. Like, Mike does, does a really good job. Um I love the shorty as well. He does a shorty design. That's pretty cool. He does. I have a acid wash copper one somewhere in another one of these storage areas in, in the closet of doom. So yeah, it's pretty great. I'm very, very happy with the pens. One of the best kind of um, um, 
you know, Kickstarter machine pens that you can buy. Like, you know, I'm biased because like I, I am in a part of a company that makes like similar pens, but both uh, Brian and I are friends with Mike and like we talk to Mike all the time and he's just a good dude and he makes great pens. So like we're big fans of what Mike Bond does at uh, TI2. Uh, I've had a, t oh, I also have the orange Cerakote one. The orange Cerakote tech liner stays on my desk. That should tell you everything I think about those pens. They are the Uniball Signo 207307. Um, he also um, can fit a the long skinny jet stream, the SXR7 maybe, I think it's called. So yeah, that's the other reason why I like them, right? So they fit the Uniball. So Mike and I have a lot in common with our love for the, the Uniball um, refills. So... Um, I don't know how old this tactile turn is, but I know it's pretty old because it uses the old Gigantor Schmidt <laughs> mechanism, which um, Will hasn't used in quite some time, but I keep it because it's orange. But this isn't a great mechanism. I mean, it's a good enough mechanism, but as Will has found out and as most other pin makers have found out, the more involved you get in making pins, the less happy you become with the Schmidt mechanism, right? This is like the, your version one maker mechanism. And then almost all of them realize, well, it's not the best experience. Um, it works for what I need. It works for me to get out the um, get out the product and then round two I'll work on making the mechanism myself and that's what almost everyone does who ends up making uh, click mechanisms like if we make a spoke retractable pin it's gonna have its own mechanism we're just gonna make one uh, that that we can design yeah like you hear that difference in the squish and then the snap like they just break down they're not great but this is a great pin right Yeah, so the what the companies that are making their own mechanisms, like I you want you want that instead of the Schmidt. Like you can get by with this, but you can also do better. And I think that's what everyone finds, right? So I think that's kind of the end result of of getting started, right? You gotta learn these things as you go along. You don't always know um until you look at this and go, Wow, number one, that doesn't look great, and number two Look, it just stuck right there. It's kind of, eh. so there you go. All right, so that's one of the older tactile turns. It's not one of the first ones. That's kind of like in the, I don't know, it's in the early days, but not uh, one of the first ones he made. Um, I keep a lot of the neat mechanical pencils that I like in this block. You don't seem to talk about Keras much anymore. What's your take on where they are? I just, the last couple fountain pens we tried haven't been great. I love the Decograph. I love the EDK. And I love the Render K. I, I just don't have any new ones of those from the past few years. <sighs> so their last fountain pens I thought were poor. Um, the ones with the snap cap. Um, I won't say poor, they were average, right? There were some technical problems with the filling mechanism um like that that didn't work very well um so yeah yeah dan's been gone about a year now i haven't talked to him in a while i haven't reached out to him in a while i need to talk to him so um yeah so the, like the last round of pins haven't been great but like i like the classics like i think the edk is one of the best edc pins ever made i think the deco graph is shockingly good like the deco the deco graph like I didn't think it would work for what they were trying to do, and it's excellent. I think the deco graph is excellent. And then I always have a soft spot for the, the OG Render K. So the, the original Render K was one of my first uh, high-tech C points. But yeah, I just haven't um, I just haven't checked out any of the new stuff. Like nothing's been like super compelling, but I will. I like them. So there you go. I should look into it. But I, like I don't need another Render K or EDK. I would check out another decograph though. Like if they do some cool materials in the decograph, that fits my hand really, really well. Like it. So there you go. Uh, the Vertex launch was rough because of the technical issues. Like, 
Oh, the ink's great too. Yes, I almost forgot about the ink. The ink is awesome. If you want a, a machine barrel fountain pen, it's gonna it's hard to beat the ink. I think it's great. The ink is a spectacular pen. So yeah, I love the Kara stuff. All right. I'll have to check out the aluminum decograph. I think I would go for the, the different materials decograph. All right, so this is one of my favorite mechanical pencils. The uh, Uni Shift Pipe Lock. Like whenever I talk about the Rotring 600, I always got to give this one a shout out because it's not in the same class or category as the 600, right? This is a plastic upper barrel but I just love the shift pipe mechanism, right? So you just, well, I'm not looking at it, so you uh, just have to twist it and put it in. Twist it and put it in, maybe. Anyway, sometime. I have this thing all messed up now because I'm not looking at it while I'm doing it. There you go. All right, so it's out and in. There we go. So there you go. So it brings the pipe all the way back in and then out somehow. Hey, Monkey Bananas. So I really like these guys. I have this one in the orange 0.7. They only make the orange in the 0.7 size, which is weird. Brooklyn Connor, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. <clears throat> Glad you rated for the later rev of the Vertex. Yeah, that probably made a huge difference because the originals were just, they were just flawed in the design. <laughs> Let me look at this. Uh... Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, see, I think the Decograph is great. If you like a smaller, lighter weight pen, like it's a good call. All right, <clears throat> out somehow. Woo. Yeah, you need a Mike's head wall sticker. Um, since we're on the, the mechanical pencil front, this is what I keep, like I keep these handy, right? Because I like them so much. So that's the shift pipe lock. This is the, uh, the Pentel Carry, which is a capped mechanical pencil. And this is the demonstrator model. So it comes in like aluminum color, aluminum finishes, you know, red, green, olive green is nice, blue. And then they do a demonstrator one, which is just dope. Um, not the easiest to get, maybe only in Japan, but you can get them off eBay. Like a friend bought this one on eBay and sent it to me because he knew I would love it and he was correct. Um, so yeah, this was great. This is really cool. So... If you're looking for a mechanical pencil that's not like your normal mechanical pencils, this is the one because you take it, you uncap it, you put the cap on the back, and then so that's how you hold it to write, and then you just standard mechanical pencil knock. It's pretty great. So it's really, really good. Classic pencil. They're about 20, 21 bucks. I think these run a little bit more because they weren't widely released and they come from japan so yeah no one ever has seen like a cap mechanical pencil it's a killer design it works perfectly and it just feels good when you write with it so it's a very different you know style of mechanical pencil than like your engineering style mechanical pencils like this right so or like this one this is another one this one i just keep because it's an impressive piece of machinery it's the um, platinum pro use so it's just like your heavy duty drafting pencil very heavy section very light plastic upper metal section very very light knurling but it is very bottom weighted like that's why i keep this pencil out a lot because I'll, I'll compare this one to a lot of other things plus it's really good in photographs like this pen photographs very well pencil excuse me photographs very well so i like to have it out platinum is a super underrated uh, mechanical pencil maker very smooth mechanism like it's it's just really well made i don't even know how much these are they're not that expensive i think under 20 dollars so like i should uh 
I should recommend this one more because it feels good. This probably feels better than the shift pipe block. I just like how this looks um, and how it works with the with the twisting, the twisting of the thing that I have unscrewed apparently. <clears throat> did to that thing. I think I unscrewed the barrel some, somewhere, somehow. All right. Um, I have some refills in here. This is random. So when I'm swapping out Schmidt refills, I have a... I, I'll swap out the uh, 8127s for the 8126s, so I just have some extras. Ajoto always sends me some extra refills. I like their singular branded ones. And then what is this? Is this a Goliath? Oh no, this is the Bolograph. So I swapped out the uh, the Bolograph refill because their, their standard refills are pretty scratchy, but I like the Bolograph pens. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> Do you use the mechanical pens, the metal mechanical pencil pen pencils more than the plastic? I like metal grip sections, right? You get these that are metal grip section plastic barrels. I like these. I use these probably the most. Um, and then the ro the rotary. ring. Do I have the jet string Parker style? Yes. I have literally hundreds of those refills in my house right now. <laughs> because we use them for a, a pen. A pen I might. Yeah, once you got the SXR 600, it's been a hard sell for others. Agree. Are there any alternative options for the Lamy M16? Not that I've ever seen. And I've been asked a thousand times. Because it's... They're... they're used in cool pens there's just not an option for it <clears throat> the demo model the demo carry is 40 to 60 wow i thought they were like five dollars more that's crazy maybe they're already not making them anymore maybe when we got them was when they launched them and could get them for like 25 i know i'm pretty sure so i got mine from george um my supply room george um yeah and i think they were under 30 at the time <clears throat> two other pins I keep handy because I'll tend to lose them. So, um, oh, the Karen Dash a Goliath. I like the Goliath, obviously. I'm selling it. But um, I like the blue Goliath. I, I like any blue ballpoint mostly. So, fountain pen model, ballpoint model. This was uh, my Lisa Frank pen that I bought a couple. There's the logo on my wall. It's crazy how that happened. Yeah, I think that must be what it is, Evan. So this was the this is the first year Ian had all these wild colors at the DC Pen Show. So when I got my Lisa Frank one, Mike got the Dexter one, you know, the blood spatter. Um, so I tend to keep this in here because I'll tend to misplace these because I carry them so much. They'll end up in a pocket or they'll end up in a drawer or they'll end up in my car and then I'll always be looking for it. So it tends to stay in this block. Um, and then the fountain pen, this is one I got from him um, when he first uh, launched. What's this one called? This What is the fountain pen called? Something 6. I want to call it the P6. Um, so this was the Bach nib. Pocket 6. Yeah, I was close. <laughs> this is the Bach nib version. Like this is when he very first came out with these. And then I have a... I actually have inked up the um, Yovo nib version. It's great. These are so good. So Ian's doing some cool stuff. Um, I got to spend some time on the phone with Ian. Me and him had a FaceTime last week for about an hour just talking about what's going on. He showed me some cool stuff. So uh, <clears throat> you, should, you should watch out. This is a pen that is awesome but i never use this is the lamy M m16 problem right here right so this is the pilot age is this ageless or capless does it say timeline pilot timeline so you see that right there it's a barrel twist it's like a double twist to get out the the nose cone then the refill and I ordered this one from Japan because I like the black barrel wood grip. It's one of the coolest pens I own, but as all of you Lamy Pico fans know, it has this weird, sh this is, it's like a short G2 refill. 
like it is it's like mini sized sorry so like this is the pilot one like can I get this in here like if I cap cut this off maybe I can manipulate something to get in there but it's just the wrong size of everything right it's smaller and shorter than similar pens so I can't yeah I haven't spent enough time to hack it but that's not a really good refill like I can get away with the Lamy in M16 refill because I like them this one's not very good but it's an amazing pen so you know that's something I have to play with and that's why I like these pens so much I ordered this one specifically just for the color and the the grip the grip is wood that um what they call those they did the uh malt malt barrel um pilot had that series where they did a bunch of grip sections in wood i think they called them like the malt series if i'm not mistaken mistaken so that's what this is um last thing in here i don't know what that was i actually do have a fountain pen in here mitsubishi has a pure malt series so maybe that's what i'm thinking of this is a fountain pen, but I keep this out here because you can tell I got a lot of short pens in here that I don't want to lose. This is one of my favorite vintage pens ever. It's a Schaefer Tuckaway, and it has one of the finest, firmest nibs anyone could ever ask for. It's just spectacular. This is just one of this is just a great pen and it's got a uh, it's got like a little vac filler guy here on the back. Let's see if I can get him. I'm always afraid to break it, but it's a lot of twists. There we go. So this is how uh, it's called a tuck away. Were all tuckies vac fill? I don't know, but this is how you test if you have a good sack in them. You you push it down, whoops, not that far. <laughs> you don't engage it. You push it down and see if it bounces back up. That's how you have know you have a good seal. And then you just reseal it like that. So that's how it feels, fills it. Um, you pretty much have to cap it. You could use it like this, but it's really short like this. I mean, you have to post it. Um, when you post it, it becomes a great kind of full size writer. But what's, what sold me on this particular one was this is like an extra fine, extra firm nib. Um, it's just really one of the best fine writing um, nibs that I have that I don't use enough. Now that one I get asked, since I don't use that many vintage pens, do I only use um, particular inks with vintage pens? And in the case of this one, yeah, I just use um, the Waterman um mysterious blue you know just a classic waterman great looking blue black ink in this pen that's the only ink i've ever filled this up with is the is the um waterman i should fill that up and do a review on that pen because i've bought like two other two i have like three of these now this is still my favorite but it's such a unique pen and it's a good way to get into vintage pens without breaking the bank like you can get a good restored one for like 80 bucks um 80 to 100 bucks so you know something like that so it's good um i wanted to take all those pins out because i wanted to show you all the cutouts on this so this is that e m block that i don't know how if they still do them it could be like sunglasses it'd be like my punk sunglasses um yeah it's just a cool randomness the only thing that's weird is these are cut straight through right so it's like this white felt base, but that's what's here. It's not wood base in the block here. That's the only thing I don't like. So if you put in a pin, like a pin could stain that, right? So they're not, uh, there's no depth of wood at the bottom here. It's just all the way through. So that's a little bit weird. Um, it's never been a problem, but it's just like a, huh, I should mention that <laughs> because it's a little strange. These, if you ever see these come up for sale, you should buy them. They're just kind of neat. Um, and they don't always have them. Like I bought, I remember buying mine the day it came out. I was like, oh, this will be cool to have. And then all of a sudden you couldn't get them anymore. Um, so if they have them, I haven't looked and see if they're still available or not. But this is like, 
I've had this for years now, two, three years. Um, and I, I wish they would do more because it's just a fun randomness type of thing. So, yeah, that's it. Like, that's kind of this one little item in the um, Closet of Doom where I keep some things that I want to use more frequently. E and M, it's E plus M, they're a German manufacturer. I don't know the name of the block, but uh, E and M, but like literally, it's like, it's like this. <sighs> like that's their logo right there. Enem Brickstocks Organizers Astro Orange. Do they have it? So, oh wow, it's seventy five dollars. I didn't realize that. I don't know if it's seventy five dollars. Cool. It's pretty cool though. So that's it right there. Four bricks dots. So they have yeah. So last chance means they're going away. I might have to get another one. Ash ice blue. That's pretty expensive. I thought they were more like 35, 40 bucks. I mean, it still might be worth it if you're into that, but that's more than I thought it, if you had me guess um, what the price was, I wouldn't have come near that price. The felt will wear out under the hole. I mean, not anytime soon, like in 30 years. Yeah, sure. But, oh, hey, did y'all get midstream ads? Let me know if you if you got a midstream ad. I want to know. We can talk about that. Where'd my monitor go? I want to know if anyone got midstream ads. Why is it my camera coming up? There it is. It's hidden. So yeah, Twitch is doing this thing where I don't have control over some ads like i could be talking and show you the coolest thing and zoop ad um so you want to see what happens twitch gave them to me less than 10 minutes into watching interesting like i don't have any control over that it's something they introduced yesterday and i didn't think they'd started it i thought they were just saying hey we're gonna do this give us feedback and of course the feedback was this is terrible like i hate this for a lot of reasons um so yeah we'll see it's not a great it's not a great thing yeah ads every eight minutes on youtube it sucks you can turn those ads off like if you're a creator like i don't i don't have those mid-roll ads in there yeah midstream ads don't do anything if you're subbed you probably won't see them yeah so but it's just it's a bad viewer experience right like whatever ad revenue those those give creators isn't worth the annoyance of like pissing off your um viewership creator controls yeah you can control that on youtube that's what i thought because i know i'm pretty sure i have those turned off yeah like i've stopped following channels on youtube for the um ads that run in between like every like six or eight minutes like it's just too it's it's too aggressive sorry but yeah i was watching like this golf uh stream and like we know how mike feels about ads you need to get your fat head guy to say that to say he needs like a a, a window a uh a chat bubble <laughs> All right, so how am I gonna reorganize this thing? Oh yeah, you made it into a stream. I know, glad you made it. It's about time. Come on. Just kidding. I don't know if I'm doing a good job putting this stuff back in or not. But yeah, highly, <laughs> I highly recommend this block. Maybe not at the price that <laughs> that we found out it really was. Sorry about that, chat. Sorry about that. Two two pin, Mike. Let's go. I know Mike's a fan of the two two pin. 
his favorite pen of all time, I think. I got a three month sub to YouTube Premium, dreading the prospect of running out. Yeah. Any perkers in your collection? Um, I have some jotters. Um, I have an old 51. I have a vacuumatic. I have a gold web vac. So I have four to five. Actually, I probably have four or five jotters, and I probably have three ish vintage, you know, 51, a vac, and a golden web. So, yeah, they're not in here. They're not in this room. Um, but, yeah, I should do, I should get out my vintage pens. So, maybe next week or maybe Thursday, like I'll get out my vintage pens um, because those are all kind of corralled together and we can go through what vintage pens I have. So, like, this is the only vintage pen I have in here. It's a Schaefer Tuckaway, which is probably one of my favorites. Wow, I think I, I think I did it, chat. Boom, Jenga. So, yeah, I did it. Cool. Some One of the pens puked on my page here. I don't know what this is. It's like this yellow booger. Like, which one of y'all did this? Someone's in trouble. No dual fold. I've never, I would get a dual fold. I've had a modern dual fold um, that I sold because I just never used it. It was such a good pen though. Um, I would get a vintage dual fold or, you know, a classic or even like a 80s, 90s dual fold. Um, but I've never found the right one. The old ones are not a price that I want to pay for the condition. Like I want, a good condition less expensive one and those just don't exist or you can get the modern ones which have some amazing materials um, but they're expensive too so it's never been it's never been my aesthetic and my style to spend that money on I'd usually spend like that's some of them are like Nakaya money right and like I would just rather have the Nakaya you know just because I'm going to use the pens. This thing is bugging me. We got to... We might have to redo... We might have to redo our little our little logo there. More midstream ads? Yeah, please tell me as you get the midstream ads. How long are the ads? Are they 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes? How many ads you're getting? Things like that. <clears throat> Jen how do a fold looks okay? I'm sure they're all okay. I mean, they're all good enough. Yeah, you just need the you need the big hole. What it what did you put on here, Evan? I didn't uh, What is this? Ooh. Are those new Rialos? Let's pop this up here. That blue one's extra sharp. Well, I guess they're both blue, aren't they? Oh, the 0100 and 0445. I wonder what those mean. I don't have to translate on here. Let's see. The dark blue one is extra sharp. That's what I should meant to say. <clears throat> those are cool. I'm still uh, I'm still real happy with my YY Pen Club. I have the YY Pen Club and Ink of the Witch. I think I'm pretty content. Sorry, Sarah. Yeah, I'll I'll make sure to give my feedback. So those are five hundred, over five hundred bucks. Yeah, it's definitely dark blue. I'll just have to do a Google Translate to see what the meanings are. They have eighteen hundred in the in the text, but this nib is 0100 and this nib is 0445, or is that 43? 0443, so we'll have to, um, someone will have to run a Google Translate to see why they have the timings on there. It's pretty neat though. <laughs> Thunder Viking with the sub, let's go. <coughs> No time for the mute button on that one, chat. 
Wow. Crazy. Thank you. <clears throat> so yeah, like I did this pin block, we'll do a vintage block one day. <clears throat> what, um, what inexpensive pins have you been, uh, have you been trying? Thank you all. Uh, Coco, what inexpensive pins have you been trying? I have two, two Coco's on the chat now. I'm sorry if I confuse y'all when I'm, when I'm talking. <clears throat> Oh yeah, we're gonna have to get rid of the names here pretty soon, I think. I just moved them out of the way. <clears throat> Expensive ones are mostly all ink. No. Expensive ones are mostly all materials. Gold nibs, added features, and things like that. <clears throat> Faber-Castell grip and all black medium, great pen. Like, you can't go wrong with that, right? Do they have a smaller one, Andrew? Well, that's only 17 bucks. Let's see. Yeah, you could get four of those for cheaper than the $175 one, right? That's pretty cool. Oh, let me pull this up so people know what I'm talking about. So the pin, the pin uh, block that we were talking about. So like my large one has one, two, three, four. Yeah, my large one has 12 in it. So you could get four for $68 and have 16 slots <laughs> for 68 instead of 75 for 12. Can you get a really good material ballpoint? Sure. Pelican makes them, Mont Blanc makes them, you know, custom pen manufacturers make them, you know. You can get anything you want with a ballpoint. You know, like I make a ballpoint that's um, like 65 bucks or it's, you know, 59 bucks. It's expensive, but it's cool. It's like, you know, all kinds of different colors and things like that. So, you know, you can get them all like this Karen Dash. It's got a little bit of style in it. These are like 30 bucks. It depends on what you're looking for. <clears throat> Aurora is really pushing the kaleidoscope ball points on social media. I don't think I've seen them. Pull that one up, OSU. Send me a link on that one. I've seen the new pink. The new pink is it an? It's not an eighty-eight. It's the uh, what's the other one? <laughs> I'm out of it, chat. <clears throat> Sailor makes a nice ball point. I keep meaning to try like one of the ho Optima. Thank you, Optima. That Optima Luna Rosa is dope. Like, like, I don't need a pen right now, but that Optima one is uh, Baron Fig Confidants in Orange just released. They're like five years too late on that bandwagon. There is a Vanishing Point ballpoint. Like, I can't go there. Like, that messes with my head too much. CDA Flexing. We'll finally get those released this weekend. Finally. I just use it so much. It's just around. It's at this desk. It's at my other desk. I kept like three of them like laying around. <laughs> so they just, they randomly appear. It's subliminals. I'm getting into your subliminals, Michael. <laughs> Buy my pen. <clears throat> yeah, but the vanishing point ballpoint is one of those really good ideas, right? If I'm in the boardroom, that's the decision I'm making, right? Pilot vanishing point. It's like, look, it's already retractable. We make the most popular gel ink refill in the world. Can we do like a G2 vanishing point thing? I was like, yes, I'm in. Except no one really wanted that. <laughs> I would have 100% made this exact same decision if I was pilot. Like if I'm making product decisions, you know I like to put myself in these, these shoes and it doesn't mean anything. I would have 100% made the exact same decision and then I wouldn't have gotten my bonus this year, that year because it would have fallen flat. It's just one of those risks you take. <clears throat> it's just one of those risks you take. I would have done the same thing and no bonus for me that year. <laughs> I'd be like, why didn't, they, why didn't people want this? It's great. Except it's not. No one really asked for that, so no one wanted it. I should... 
I'm sitting here thinking I should keep this whole dock of pens in here, but I really don't need it. I already have the mini dock. You get the boy vanishing point ball point. They're cool. Like I have no qualms with them. This is the dock. This is the do deck dock I keep in here. Oh, did I win the? I forgot about this. Did I win the prize yet? Oh, it's not till September twenty second. That's my uh, that's my golden ticket for uh, um, CW pencils. So yeah, this is the one I keep on my desk here. I don't want this desk to end up being another pin desk. Like that's enough, because I still keep other stuff on here. I keep notebooks over here. Or I got more pins over here. Oh man, I got my flu shot this morning. It, the the soreness just kicked in. Oh yeah, I want to see something cool. <clears throat> all right i'm gonna show y'all something on my phone on the camera which never works but it's cool enough that i think i'm gonna show you i wonder if it would work better i wonder if it would work better on this cam If I did, if I desk cammed my phone, I don't want my Twitch stream desk to be a pin desk. No, I'll bring them in here and then they will leave. So let's see if this will work. All right, can y'all see this? All right, everyone be quiet. Oh, let me turn it up. play it again <laughs> that's too cool that is uh no that's a 3d printer printing uh that's brian testing out pin barrel designs on his 3d printer so um i have the finished product in a future picture but i'm not going to show you that one but uh, how cool is that? <clears throat> oh, are you, is this the... Uh, my son thinks he has done an hour of work in less than 10 minutes. Help me. No, you would get no help here because that's just the way it is right now. It's like, yeah, I've done everything. Like class, I'm done with class. And it, you're like, it's been 13 minutes. Like there's no way you're done with classes. So like, yeah, I did all the things. I'm like... What do you do? All right. This pen is, this is the ballpoint. Like I wouldn't spend this much on a ballpoint, but I'll be dang if that didn't. If we were having pen shows, I'd probably leave from a pen show with this pen. Like I'm not gonna go order it. But that's a me pen, if I've ever seen one. It's really great. <clears throat> So maybe if I sell a bunch of pens, that would be on the list. But yeah, 560 euros. We'll see. We'll see. Love it. Really good. All right. I think I'm about to wrap it up. Chat. Anything else y'all need from me? You're considering the Rosa FP? Yeah, it's great. It's great looking. Um... It's been a week already, like, you know, as a lot of weeks have been this year. Um, I'm sure I'll stream Thursday. We'll see if we can get the vintage pins out and see what I what I have as far as vintage goes. Um, are you using your Stromboli? Yes. So I had it on my desk the other day and had about 10 pins laid out. Some were clean, some were in use. They were just in the transition state from my desk to storage. My wife was looking at my desk and she's like, ooh, what is this? And picked up the Stromboli. So I was like, yeah, you like that one, don't you? <laughs> so a uh, big win on the Stromboli. It just feels, it's a really good writing pen. It just feels really, really good. Um, it reminds me of like my king of pen. It's like just a pen I want to have because I know it's going to be a good writer. Like I probably won't ever get anything done with the nib. It's an extra fine nib. Like this is a stock medium nib. Um, they write really similarly. They feel really good. Um, it's just a great pen. 
So, yeah, <clears throat> been liking that. That's one of those pins. Like, I don't know if I'll ever review that pin. I probably will because it's the first of that piston mechanism model that they make, the Grand Grande. Um, I'll probably eventually review it. But, like, I'm not in, like, a hurry to review it. Like, I'm just enjoying it right now. Look forward to my conversation with Gina. Yeah. Let's see if I got any. Um, <clears throat> so I uploaded all the audio. Okay. The editor has not come back to me yet with any problems. So we're tracking for tomorrow. Tomorrow release. Um, super fun conversation. Went by way too fast. We did almost an hour and it just flew by and um, it was really good. <clears throat> I did get your question in uh, also, Andrew. Snuck it in there on her. Got to put her on the spot. So. Um, losing my voice all of a sudden so i'm gonna go stop talking go drink some more water and uh great idea to interview her i know who came up with that idea like i that was a great idea by me totally <laughs> totally my idea <clears throat> all right props to tony on that one um because i was drawing a blank so waiting for the lamy dialogue cc last night last night next month yep hydrate streamer i know i gotta start bringing my water in here like, I have this Coke, but that's not helping. All right. Um, I'm going to go post something on Instagram, the Knox Instagram, that I'm waiting on the launch. So as soon as it, as soon as soon I get the go, it's a go. Um, we're ready. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. Goodbye. Look, my hand is two feet by two feet. It's really not that big. Cool. This will be fun. All right. So, um, you know, any advertisers want to go over here, we can get you a fat head over here. We can get, uh, you know, Aurora pins over here. There you go. <laughs> Still broadcasting on Discord. Not tomorrow. No live show tomorrow. We pre-recorded because Mike is appling this week. So he's a little bit sidetracked. All right. Talk to you all later. Bye.